Hi! In today's video I want to show you around the Forlinks OK6254 Linux SDK. So you will need the software development kit if you want to build a Linux image applications or kernel modules for the Forlink system on a module based on the AM6254 chip from Texas Instruments. So let's start. First let's talk about the preparations you have to make. So TI and Forlinks um, recommends to use Ubuntu 804 for using their SDKs. The problem is Ubuntu 804 will reach end of life soon, so I've installed Ubuntu 2004 on an old PC of mine which I will use for developing or playing around with the Linux SDK. And here I have installed it on a physical computer, but of course you can also use a virtual machine or a Docker image for example. Maybe we'll actually do a video on how to get this SDK into a Docker image. But after installing Ubuntu, you have to install some dependencies. Here you can see the um, compiling guide for the Linux SDK from four links. And down here you can see the packages which are needed to, um, in, to yeah, compile the SDK. So we have some standards like Wim or Git. We have make, auto make, autoconf, libtools, I think for, yeah, the compilation process, starting the compilation process, and we have some disk tools for partitioning, like DOS FS tools, mtools parted, and we have uboot tools and kmod. Yeah, so these are the dependencies you have to install if you want to use this SDK. And how do you get this SDK? Well, the basic procedure from for links is you buy a board from them and then you contact for links and ask if they could give you access to the sources and then you will be able to download the following. So here you can see the zip archive which is about 9 gigabytes big and this contains the whole SDK. So I've extracted here in my programming folder so let's take a look at it. Okay, we have some files from TI, but these are basically just um, these are basically just the datasheet and the technical reference manual of the used TI chip. And here we have a Linux folder. In this Linux folder, we have some pre-built um, OS images. One time for a one gigabyte, um, yeah, for a one gigabyte system on a module, and for a two gigabyte system on a module. And here in the source folder, we have a compressed Linux SDK. We have Qt Creator already set up for, yeah, so you can compile the, your Qt apps for the ARM chip, which is embedded in the TIM6254 chip, or the ARM processor embedded in the TI chip. And you have here this must read um, folder. And in this folder you have some files. And by default the SDK is set up for the 2 GB um, system on the module version. But if you want to use the 1 GB version instead, you have to copy these files into a specific folder. I will show you this just in a second. Okay, so what I did is I took this SDK and extract this file into my programming folder. So here we have the SDK. Let's take a look around it. So I, think, I don't think I have to say too much about these two folders here. So here we have the sources for the Linux kernel with the configuration for the OK6254 board. This is the file system of Linux. So if I go into here we have our root file system and in here yeah this just looks like a standard Linux root file system and we already have some applications in here pre-compiled for the ARM Cortex-A53 cores which will run Linux. And we will, we will also have libraries pre-compiled so this is pretty standard for a Linux SDK. Then we have some app sources and in here we have some example applications. For example here we have some command line applications, yeah, a URL test for example or an SBI test here and a makefile to build all of them. We have some Qt examples applications. Here we have the MCU demo. So in here we have 
applications for the Cortex M4 core, which is embedded in the AM6254 chip. So here we have some, here we have a GPIO demo, I2C, your demo, and a demo for inter-process communication between the Linux on the A53 core and the M.4 core, or M4 core, sorry. Okay, so these are the app sources. Here in extras we have some additional modules like a crypto module, jailhouse, and here in the image folder we, yeah, the built images, for example down here we have the device tree files um, compiled, we have a RAM disk image, and we have the bootloader, ti boot.bin, and in here we have a u boot.bin folder. And by default, in this folder and this ti boot drive.bin file is for the 2 gigabyte variant. If you want to use the 1 gigabyte variant, you have to ch um, delete these files, go back to um, this folder here, and copy these files here in your image folder of the Linux SDK. Okay, so what else do we have here? We have some building tools. Here in here we have the um, MCU Plus SDK, which is the SDK from Texas Instruments for building applications on the M4 core. We, here we have so, the software for the PRUs, which are another kind of embedded processors from TI, and we have some tools to build the applications. So this is the compiler for the PRUs, and here we have a compiler or TI compiler for the ARM Cortex M4 core. And sysconfig is a yeah graphical tool from Texas Instruments to yeah set up the peripherals you want to use. So for example, if you want to use GPIOs, you can use sysconfig to set everything up, and this will make the software a little bit easier for you, or the program a little bit easier for you. Okay, and then we have some files here. These are build scripts, so over these scripts we can actually build the um, Linux image and the whole Linux SDK, so this was optimized in this build.sh script. And down here these two files weren't in the SDK by default, I got them for, from for links. So this is um, a PDF explaining how to, yeah, how to get SD card boot up and running, and this bash script will format an SD card for or in order to use it with a SDCOG boot. But I will show you this in later videos. Okay, so now let's take a brief look at the build.sh file. So, so basically in here we have everything to um, we have everything in it to build all the parts of the SDK. For example we have a folder built kernel config and in here the kernel configuration will be built. We have a folder for, or we have a function here for building the kernel and this will build us a kernel. I will make a separate video about how to comp um, compile the kernel soon. Here we have a function for cleaning the kernel. Yeah, here it's called building uboot, but this is a little bit misleading because uboot is not a part of this SDK. Forlinks delivered uboot as a pre-built image, but this will build the uboot images together, I think. Yeah, and so we have different targets here. And if I run the script with the option help, I can see all the different things which can be built with the script. So if I run build sh all, it will build the whole Linux SDK. If I only want to build the kernel, I can pass the argument kernel here and this will only build the Linux kernel. And if I only run build sh, this will set some environmental variables. On the first run of build.h, this will also install us an Arago package. So let me go to slash opt here. And in here you can see we have this folder, Arago 2021-09 um, OR64 Linux TI SDK. So Arago is a project which tries to help you getting started porting Linux to other 
or compile Linux for different target systems. And if we go in here, we have the sysroot folder and this contains two things. First, in here we have a cross compiler for compiling applications for the Cortex-A53 cores. So in here, if I go to user, here we have the compilers. And in this folder here, we have another um, root file system containing applications already compiled for the ARM Cortex-53 cores here. So that's about everything from the SDK. And in my next video, I will actually build a bootable Linux image for the Forlinx OK62541 evaluation board. So I guess that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.